Welcome to today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. Today's episode, back pain. <laughs> so as, as my beautiful assistant uh, just explained, we're going to be talking about back pain today. Mostly low back pain or surrounding the lumbar spine. There are many causes for it. Uh, it really comes down to three different factors. Before I get into it, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, very, very basic spinal anatomy. So most people, and you need to kind of understand this before you kind of get onto the bike element of it. So most people possess what's called a lordosis of the lumbar spine. So there's a curvature, a natural curvature in the lower back here. The problem with this is when we move you onto a bicycle, you tend to adopt a slightly different pelvic orientation, which results in uh, spinal extension. Now, what that means, and this is you know what, which this is what brings us on to our first cause for lower back pain, is excessive reach. Because what happens is you've got a, a spine that wants to be in a flexed state, but when you're uh, overextended, it becomes into an extended state. Well, what that means is you end up overextending the lower back. Uh, and that's one of the, one of the more, very much more common causes of, of, of lower back pain. Ways you can have a go at reducing reach, uh, you could have a go at changing the handlebar for a different handlebar reach, you could change the stem length, uh, you could go down bike size, you could move the saddle further forward. You need to be careful about just doing that in isolation because it can upset other elements. But there are lots of ways of reducing reach. So if you're getting lower back pain, particularly back pain that's across the general part of the lower back, so it's not one-sided, uh, the, the reach is quite possibly the, the reason why you're experiencing that. So have a go at reducing the reach of the bike, see if it improves things. Quite often I find when we reduce reach, we actually increase the handlebar drop. So when you, re when you reduce the reach, you're able to take the front end lower. That actually quite often ends up taking pressure off the hands as well. It also lowers your center of gravity and makes the bike handle better. Well, that kind of leads us on to what if it's on one side. Now, one of the most common drivers, one of the most common blinders that we see in here is excessive saddle height by both bike fitters, bike shops, and consumers alike. And when a rider runs their saddle too high, it's extremely uncommon for that person to sit centrally and overextend both of their legs. So most people tend to preference one side over the other. Actually, most people are right-handed, which means that they tend to preference the right side over the left, not always, but generally. And what that results in is a shift over to the right-hand side. Now, what that means is that you end up with a hyper-extended left leg and an under-extended right leg. It's a means of sacrificing the left for the right. And what that means is that you end up overextending the sacroiliac joint on this left-hand side. So again, if you're, if you're getting pain on one side, it might be that you're overreaching on that one side. Solutions to that would be well, I don't know, lower the saddle. Again, it's important to understand that quite often when we reduce saddle height, we actually make other changes at the same time, like changing the stance, changing the cleat location, changing the reach. But, you know, if it's, if it's single-sided, it might be a way of just remedying. Do it a little bit at a time, maybe five mil, 10 mil at a time, and see how you get on, and that should solve it for you. And it's free. It's also free, yes. Just to dispel a little bit of a myth that I was certainly privy to a number of years ago. I don't know whether it's still around, but there is a myth surrounding lower back pain when you are climbing. So when you're climbing and the bicycle's elevated, the front of the bicycle's elevated, you pedal differently. So what you tend to do is you dorsiflex, you drop the heel, which means that if your saddle's too high, you're extending your leg even more than you are. So the, the myth was, just to go back a step, was that uh, you, you get lower back pain when you're climbing, but you need to strengthen your lower back muscles and then the pain goes away. Well, basically again, it's, it's about saddle height reduction. Quite often, as I, as I said, when, you, when the front of the bike's elevated, you start to dorsiflex or drive through the heel a lot more, which results in more extension of the leg. Thus, you're extending the leg even more than you would do if the bike was level. The way of remedying it would be to reduce the saddle or move to Texas where there are no hills. So the final potential cause of lower back pain could be your saddle itself. Now, there are a couple of reasons why the saddle could be causing you issues. So for example, if you don't have any pressure relief in the saddle and it results in posterior rotation of the pelvis, so in English, rather than uh, adopting a neutral spine like so, we tend to roll the pelvis away to 
get, uh, get pressure away from the soft tissue, that again creates even more spinal flexion, so that, that's putting quite a lot of stress through this, um, this, this lumbar region. Secondly, again, it kind of goes back to the, the excessive saddle height thing. Quite often when a rider has been riding excessive saddle height for a long time and they sit off to one side for a long time, quite often saddles collapse which means that it no, off, it no longer offers you or provides you any support. So even though lowering the saddle height might improve things, actually you've then got a saddle that's collapsed and it's, just, it's kind of still promoting that, that asymmetry. So it's worth looking at your equipment, checking whether it's uh, level in this, in this plane from left to right. Quite often you might see, if someone who sits off to the right hand side, you might see that the right side of the saddle has, has just completely collapsed. Uh, it's particularly common in certain generations of specialized saddle. It tends to happen on, um, on saddles with cheaper saddles with pressure relief channels. Having said that though, I've seen a number of saddles, even like this Ario, where the padding becomes compacted on one side or one of the wings starts to crack. So it's actually worth almost replacing your saddles every few years just to kind of keep them fresh because they do they do fatigue a lot of the hulls are made of plastic for example so that te they, they tend to give up to summarize how to how to remedy it might be replace the saddle uh it might be get a bike fit get a bike fit there you go get a bike fit just for a change what's that noise you're scanning your <laughs> Did you, did you just sell yourself a bottle of water by accident? Yes. So that marks the end of today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. If you have any questions for us, please put them in the comment section down below and I'm sure James will do his best to answer them. If you have any topics that you'd like us to cover, any places where you're getting pain that you would like to be covered in the videos, let us know. Link down below to James's website if you'd like to book a fit with him or one of his colleagues at the shop. Thank you and see you next time.